there is little breast development prior to puberty. And at the onset of puberty, the condition of the breast in males and females is roughly equivalent. However, once menstrual cycles start and steroid hormones such as estrogen and progesterone are produced from cholesterol, these then cause uh, a number of genes to be activated given that these hormones bind cytoplasmic uh, receptors and then enter the nucleus where they bind to DNA and activate genes which had previously been inactivated. These genes can promote cell growth and turn on uh, the nuclear genes which will then promote progression through the cell cycle. And so thus a great deal of breast development begins with the onset of puberty with the steroid hormone. The size of the breast increases primarily due to the increase in the amount of adipose which lies deep to the glandular epithelial tissue. In general, this adipose does not affect the quantity or quality of milk which can be produced, although there may be some considerations such as the possibility that the hormones made by fat cells, uh, the adipocytokines, are becoming a component of milk, or that fat-soluble chemicals, perhaps um, chemical pollutants uh, to which a woman has been exposed, which may have been stored in the adipose tissue of the breast, may uh, be entering breast milk. During puberty, the ducts in the mammary glands lengthen growing primarily from the tips, from the terminal epithelial buds. Cells divide here, and it is shown that stem cells exist here, which can uh, differentiate and produce both the luminal cells, uh, which can later produce milk, and the myoepithelial cells, which can contract. In addition to the growth of epithelial cells, the connective tissue also must grow and modify as MMP enzymes are degrading the collagen which surrounds the ducts, and this is essential for growth. This growth is primarily controlled by estrogen and progesterone, and this can be demonstrated in mice with genetic mutations or gene knockouts of mice which lack a specific gene. Mice without the estrogen re receptor show little to no ductal growth. Mice without the progesterone receptor show little ductal growth. And mice without the prolactin receptor show reduced branching. Also, those MMP enzymes when mutated in mice cause a very little uh, development of breast tissue to develop. In humans, during each menstrual cycle, primarily in the second half, in the luteal phase, mammogenesis continues. This includes the branching of the ducts of the mammary glands, forming collateral branches, the conversion of the terminal epithelial buds into round alveoli, which in later menstrual cycles increase in size and complexity, and even after the mammary gland is primarily established, later menstrual cycles will continue to give these cells the uh, progesterone and estrogen, which cause uh, cells to divide and can cause epithelial cell numbers to increase up to twofold, primarily the luminal cells rather than the myoepithelial cells. At the end of the menstrual cycle, then the cell number decreases. Uh, there are other uh, signals and hormones involved, uh, such as prolactin, luteinizing hormone, FSH, uh, growth hormone, and epidermal growth factor. In this image, you can observe the terminal epithelial bud, which is where most of the cell division uh, will occur. These buds can split or bifurcate, and they can produce collateral branches going off uh, from the primary branch. In this image, the two types of epithelial cells in an alveolus are depicted, 
both the luminal cells which surround uh, the lumen and can uh, later be stimulated to produce milk and the myoepithelial cells, which are more basal to them, uh, which are contractile and can have a role in ejecting milk.